Uh, now in the back here, these are some pitcher tubes. These are the one, these are 7JP4s, commonly used in sets like this. Uh, except for this one, this is a 7VP1, which is the, uh, a green white or green and black tube that was used by RCA. Uh, they made, actually made a 7 inch oscilloscope. Nice thing about that is it's fully compatible electrically with that set and uh, it's more common and less valuable than these 7JP4s which are getting kind of scarce. So when I test out sets I always use that tube first. So I don't damage one of these harder to get tubes. Now this is even rarer. This is an 8BP4 which is the 8 inch version of that set. Very few sets use these. And I think it was the largest electrostatic TV picture tube ever made. And finally we have these beasts. What these are is 12 inch radar tubes. I got these I think in the early 80's from a surplus outfit in Ohio and I've had them ever since. I did uh, once or twice back in the 80's make my own little high voltage rig and, and such and hook up the right voltages so I could get a display on these. And uh, they are pretty wild. Uh, while I had these out it got me thinking that they're not all that <clears throat> dissimilar looking from these TV picture tubes. It's the same base. And when I looked up the, the, the data for these tubes, the pinout is mostly the same. The main difference is this has that high voltage connector up here, whereas these feed it into the base. So what I'm going to try to do now is actually make an adapter socket and hook one of these up to that set. And uh, it should be pretty wild. <laughs> Before I do that though, I'll give you a taste with this 7 VP1 to show you what a uh, black and green TV might look like. <laughs> so hang on for that. Oh, hey, before I move on, I almost forgot. My little gizmo here is fired up. And I'll turn the lights off. Okay, with the camera light. All right. So what this is is I made a quadrature oscillator, which makes a sine wave 90 degrees out of phase. Feed into the horizontal and vertical, and you get the circle. And these various controls do the, the offset. This controls the circle diameter. Focus and intensity. Now, the deal is you got that center pin here. You can feed a signal into it. So what I have is I just have it set up so uh, you basically just touch it with your finger and it uh, makes the whole thing oscillate. Because uh, I'm out of sync with the uh, um, the quadrature oscillator, it's not going to make a nice pulse at any point on here, but there is some uh, kind of an interference pattern there at the corners. But anyway, this gives you some idea what these might have looked like in operation. Alright, next up, I'm going to try to hook up those picture tubes. Okay, first up I've got a 7VP1 installed on this TV. Nice thing about these electrostatic Motorola sets is you can just disconnect the internal CRT, flip the socket around 180 and then plug an external CRT in the back. Great way to test these guys. Got the uh, blonder tongue modulator set up. Got a DVD playing. So let's turn this on. I remember this is a P1 phosphor type, which is the green phosphor that is used in old oscilloscopes. So, if all goes well, I should have a black and green TV. <laughs> First signs of life. Alright. <laughs> Just adds an extra touch to the sci-fi programming. Yeah, it's upside down, so I'll just turn the camera over for it. And there's another factor to these phosphors besides just color, and that's persistence. The P4 type on a normal black and white TVs is what they call a medium persistence. And so is this green P1 phosphor. So that's why the picture actually looks okay. If I was to use a short 
class for like I think a P12, like an Ektronic scope, uh, the picture would, uh, the electron beam would literally be fading away before it finished scanning the picture. And uh, the brightness would be really, you'd see like bands of the picture, you know, it'd be very noticeable with the uh, vertical retries. Now apparently you can also do this if you have an oscilloscope that has an X and a Y input and then a Z input usually on the back for intensity modulation. And you can wire it into a TV like this, just pick out the right signal points and uh, you can actually watch TV on an oscilloscope. <laughs> Never actually tried it, but I was just reading about it online. Sounds like something fun to try someday. Speaking of fun things to try, next up I'm going to try to hook up this beast. Now the problem with this guy is that number one, come on, turn it off. I cannot find a complete precise data for this tube. I don't think it was made for long. I don't think it was used for long. And the best I could find out of all searching on the internet through all my books is I just got the basic pinout and what voltages it takes. Not much beyond that. And in particular, there's one extra element in this tube than this set has, so I'm not quite sure what to do with that. But, I want to try it. Everything else seems to be the same. The filament, the cathode, the control grid. It's just when you get to the accelerating anodes, because this has this extra button up here, which this guy does not have. Uh, so what I'm going to try doing is take the highest voltage potential on this socket and instead of routing it to the pitcher tube, I'm going to have it come out in a, a separate lead and wrap around to this guy. And dress up the rest as best I can and give it a try. Now this is P7 phosphor, which is yellow-white, the radar tube, which is a long persistence. I've never seen a TV pitcher on a long persistence phosphor tube, so I'm really curious to see how it turns out. Take me a little while to hook up an adapter socket. I'll pick up when I'm ready. Okay, I've got the 12 FB7 hooked up in a manner of speaking. The pinout isn't quite the same, and it's got some elements that aren't quite the same, and it takes voltages that aren't quite the same, so I did the best I could and routed these wires through this rat's nest here, and had to run a high voltage lead over to here. So let's see what happens, if anything. I'm set the camera down so I can set. And remember, this is a totally different phosphor than a TV is meant to have. This is a much longer persistence, so I expect the picture. Hey, it's something in there. The, spit, the picture should be incredibly blurry if there's an image at all. Oh, <laughs> there's sort of an image. Like I said, it's incredibly blurry. And there's some just psychedelic effects going on there. Yeah, it took me on a bad acid trip, I think. <laughs> I'll play with the controls, see if I can get anything better than that. I think that's about as good as it's going to get, actually. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my cathode ray tube collection. And uh, I'm going to pick up tomorrow with uh, the restoration of that Admiral Radio. Thank you.